Hello everyone, welcome back to a new episode of the Hearthstone Hour. Today we're going to be focusing on 14 pools and 16 pools. We're going to be starting off with 16 pools. A lot of people have been asking me for a very long time now. Um, hey, how do I beat this? Um, give me good responses, give me good follow-ups, and tell me what to scout for, tell me what to do. So, we're going to start with a 16 pool. First of all, shout out to my man Agaham, who was uh, very willing to play whatever pool I wanted to with whatever follow-up I asked for. So um, I will leave a link to his Twitter in the description below if you want to follow him there. That would be great. Um, <coughs> but yeah, basically what we're going to be doing, we're going to assume we always Gateway Scout. Um, it's actually easier if you play Pylon Scout, but Gateway Scout is just a little more... Uh, a little more common. I know a lot of you like the gateway scout, so we're just gonna do it from here. It also makes reading the timings a little bit easier. Now, on top of that, we're also gonna assume that we don't get a block on the natural here. Uh, we're not gonna care about that. We're just gonna care about getting information and uh, doing a proper response. Like you can make your opponent's life way harder with a lot of things, but I want to show you guys the most consistent response to this. So. Uh, without any tricks, without uh, annoying your opponent, you just want to get ahead after an early pool. So, we scout the early pool at, uh, at about 115, 116, and we see it isn't done yet. The second overlord is already quite a way out, so we know that the pool was not built before the overlord. That's kind of a big tell, because that basically means that it's either going to be a 15 pool or a 16 pool, and both of them are... You have the same response again and against those, so that's going to be a big tell. Now, 16 pool finishes up at, as we can see, 126, 127. Um, and as a response, so we have our probe. Once we see that it's no hatch first, no matter what we scout after this, we already know we're gonna get a cyber core after gateway. So instead of getting a nexus before the gateway, we're gonna get cyber uh, core before nexus. Uh, and from there on out, the rest of our response uh, will become clear. Now, something important here is the positioning of this cyber core. You want the cyber core and the gateway to hug each other at all times. Um, the reason for this is, is uh, well, I, I can just show you guys, because it's as we follow up with our standard build order from a core first, so we go core, 20 nexus, um, and then we get a 20 pylon, and we build it in the wall. Maybe like, huh? in the wall that's interesting exactly that's very interesting indeed because in this case what we're going to be able to do is we're going to be able to full wall this with another pylon now and this is possible on every single map every wall is a maximum of 10 little blocks now these are uh, three blocks these are three this is two and then two more three plus three plus two plus two ten exactly um, there are maps which it's even easier to wall, where you can do it with just a gateway and a core, and then you don't have to build a second pile in here. But in general, if you do it like this, you're always going to be fine. Then you even have money. So you, you just continue your build order as normal. It's basically what I'm saying. So you get your assimilator, standard timing. You get your adapt, you chrono boost it. You can get your warp gate. And then the moment you have money, you throw down your pile in ASAP, basically. And um, this should be done in such a way that no matter what happens, you're gonna be able to cancel this before your, uh, what do you call it, your dude comes out. Now, ideally, you have this pylon be a bit further in front, so the surface area on this pylon isn't this massive, um, because now there's a good chance you're gonna lose this pylon later on, which actually does end up happening in this game. Um, wait, let me just continue. So you wanna cancel this pylon. Start a second adapt immediately, very important. Chrono boost it as well. Try to make sure that these that these links don't get in. So this actually was a small mistake by me. And then what you get is you get a robotics facility. And there's also two things you can do from here, by the way. But robotics facility, I think, is by far the safest way to, to follow this up. Um, you still have this probe that hopefully is outside. Now, you can do two things. You can either sacrifice an adept to get a very consistent scout, or you can try to scout with your probe to see what he's doing. It's less consistent. If queen is in position or there's one or two links, you might get denied. So, in like I said, I'm trying to show you guys the most consistent way. So, I'm going to show you guys the scout with a single adept. Um, I lose this pylon, which sucks for me. And then after uh, the robo, in this case, I get a second gate. You can also get a Twilight Council first and then a second gate. A uh, second gate is a little bit safer, but I, I think I prefer Twilight Council first, but it doesn't matter too much. And then from here, um, 
when you scout, so here I scout, blah -de blah -de blah -de blah and I see a good drone count, I see no roaches popping, I see two queens, they're injecting, they're creeping, uh, I could even go spot that third base. If I see that, I finish my Twilight Council and I don't do anything with my robotics facility. Nothing. You just you just let it leave it there. This is just your insurance policy, basically. You follow up with two extra gateways, and then you just go into a standard glaive timing. Um, and the build actually is extremely similar to your regular glaive timing. Your 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 first warp in is gonna be a little bit later, perhaps. Um, but in general, you still do the things in similar order. You see, I have three adapts. I'm getting my glaive. Uh, I'm getting my prism. And, and four gateways and and then we start pushing out on the map and really it's just the same thing as usual except we're in a better situation so normally um, when zerg defends glaive adapts uh, by the time you have by, by the time you have around uh, eight adapts they should be at 41 workers five queens and probably around this worker count so worker or sorry this link count so link count is pretty similar but he has two less queens um he does uh, his road run is a little bit delayed um and on top of that he also has uh less drones so a very good situation for me now of course you still need to play it out from here the game isn't over a lot of the time people play against pool first and i think it's a massive investment but it's not a massive investment it's just if the toss responds properly, toss is going to be slightly ahead and you're going to be able to leverage that advantage a lot of the time. And that's exactly what I'm doing here, right? I'm following just up with a standard glaive push and, and he's pretty much dying to it. So uh, I can show you guys the rest of my follow-up as well if you want. So I continue building more and more uh, glaive adapts. I warp in four more and then I get a robo bay. I said, and then I get a robo bay and I start doing disruptor drop. But at this point, I'm in such a good position that honestly, the game is pretty much over. I'm up seven, eight workers. Um, I mean, I'm killing, I'm, I'm fighting roaches head on here, which that's always is a bad sign. He doesn't, hasn't started a layer. There's no spores. He's still only on four queens and my adapt count is massive. So I'll leave the replay uh, down here below, but I don't want to waste too much time on this as really the focus is just on holding the initial uh, early pools. So let's hop into the second game where we'll be looking at how to beat the all-in version of the 16 pool. All right, here we are with uh, the second game between me and Agaham. Now, once again, I asked him to do a 16 pool in this game. So start is going to be very, very similar. Uh, I messed it up one game. I messed up my one, one game. I messed up my wall. So we had to redo from replay. Uh, you'll see that soon. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I scout. See the late, ha late hatchery timing. Usually I already have to be in the base and to, to scout all that, but you can also see it from hatchery timing then. I get my cyber core. I saw the second overlord, so I know it's pool after second overlord. Um, I get the nexus. And you see the way I'm walling once again, very, very similar. And he opens up with, uh, I think eight links this time, or just six. This time it might just be six links. That's okay. Not that big of a deal. Um, and here, this is the better way to do it. So we have uh, the, the pylon further in the back and the, the one that's going to full wall, we're going to put further in the front. You see? So then there's less surface area on this pylon and he just needs to attack this pylon. Like there's no, no other solution for him. And so this time around, I put it on the inside because I, I'm in less of a hurry and then he can't run in. My pylon isn't low. And now, now there's two things you can do here. I decided to use my robo facility for the wall, but you can also just build it behind. I think building behind it might actually be a little bit safer and in my opinion, just a little bit better as well, honestly. Um, so once my second adapt is out, I shade it across the map. Uh, if you time everything a bit better, you might even be able to send your first adapt properly. Uh, and then by the time you see a roach, so if I had the robo, like actually having the robo facility in the wall is not that nice, I think. Uh, I'd much rather have it over here, especially if there's link, like a link speed. This time he did an all in with two gas, very fast roaches, very fast ravagers. And uh, that actually was kind of nice for me in this case because uh, I don't have to worry about the link run by. So a full wall isn't as necessary. I just need raw fighting power. And uh, I still think having a robo in the back might just be slightly better. Then you can full wall as well, gateway cyber core over here. 
like a, a second cyber core. Whenever you have to wall areas that aren't walled yet and you want to do it with a three by three building, you always should be using cyber cores at, um, they're the same cost as a gateway and a forge, but they build way faster. Um, and they have more HP and more shield, as you can see. So they also gain HP and uh, shield way faster than anything else in the game. So I full wall, start chrono, bo chrono boosting out an immortal. I can even pull out of gas over here. I wouldn't have minded if I had done. I also wouldn't have minded if I would have built another pylon behind, behind there, as I'm about to get supply block, which is never that brilliant. Now, I see fast two ravagers, and I know, hey, this, is, this can be speed. So I feel comfortable canceling this. Um, I can start repairing this uh, robo facility now once again it shows why I rather have it in the back then it isn't so vulnerable to this I could have saved my super battery for something useful instead but now instead I'm, I'm losing it and that sucks a little bit um, Starcraft is a lot of anticipating things so now that I lost this robotics facility a very smart man might say hey probably the gateway and the cyber core next right exactly so that's why you want to be building extra buildings in the back um, especially Cybercore is really important to rebuild and I completely forget to do that this game because you want to be able to spam batteries as much as you can um, and then you can just get as many gateways as you want I think I even get a Stargate in this case and yeah whatever I have so much money I know he can't get speed with how he's playing uh, or at least he can't get a lot of links out of this uh, he only has a single queen so I just kind of continue pumping out immortals uh, and extra units from the gateways that I'm building. If you have semi-decent micro, you should never really be able to lose that. But really the most important thing is to start being able to scout with that adapt on the other side of the map and seeing, hey, this is exactly what's happening. And then going, oh, okay, that's, that's kind of interesting. And then honestly, the follow up here, what I'm doing, uh, at this point, the game is already over in my head. So all I really need to do is not die. I'm even way too aggressive. Uh, I'm still way too aggressive. I mean, I have 44 workers against 18. I could just be building seven cannons if I wanted to, or just going really hard on defensive units. But I, I want him to leave my game, and he isn't doing that, so I might lose one or two void rays to Biles. <laughs> <laughs> here I was like, okay, I'm not gonna get hit again, right, by the Biles, but I think here I absolutely blasted that. Lose two void rays to Biles. Pretty impressive, but I mean, the game is still over. I'm even taking a third base against a guy on 18 workers, so. I couldn't care less, guys. Yeah. EGG's out. Um, so yeah, now it basically is the same setup as the game before, right? So Robo uh, before anything. If I hadn't seen any roaches here and I scout, I see a lot of drones, I just would have thrown down a Twilight again and be completely fine. So it, it really is a very consistent way with easy reactions to basically everything you can see. And that's very important. Um, also, this replay will be down in the description below. Let's head into game number three where, where we will be looking at a uh, 14 pool, which is the, the final one of the tricky pools, basically. Alright, here we are in uh, game number three. I pressed the record button. Nice. Today's been a good day. Yesterday I recorded three videos that never got recorded. So uh, that added a, a solid one and a half hour of work to my day. But today everything seems to be going great. <laughs> so... Um, <laughs> What we're gonna do here is we're gonna be playing against a 14 pool. Now, 14 pool is a little tricky because you know it's not a 12 pool. I already have a guide on how to be 12 pool. If you're curious, like, hey, why aren't you telling us how to be 12 pool? There's a guide on that. Just type in the YouTube search bar, Harshtem 12 pool guide or something like that. So just have a look at that. 14 pool is very tricky. Um, we did it once uh, before this game and he blasted me because I thought I had a good response, but I didn't. So I'm glad we actually, uh, I, I made this little, uh, this little thing because I honestly would have lost as well the next time someone would have done it. So I, I was asking him like, hey, what do you think, two gate before Nexus? And he's like, yeah, most people most people do two gate before Nexus. And I do want to stress that uh, Agam is a very good player. He's, I think, between 6-1 and 6-3 usually on the European ladder. And he's an absolute expert in early pooling. He's very, very good with 16 pool. He has very many different follow-ups. So I think he's actually one of the most knowledgeable on the theory of the 16 pool, even more so than Bly. So he, he really is someone that I uh, I respect his knowledge on this, uh, a crap ton, basically. So um, let's just m move back here for a second. So the tells here are this overlord uh, just popped, which is like, hey, why is that so late, you know? Uh, and also we see instead of 126, we see the pool finish at 112. So that's a lot faster already, right? That's uh, 
like 12, 20, 15 seconds faster. Sounds about right. So here I'm like, okay, um, I still like, I, I don't want to get a fast nexus in this case. In this case, we're doing it different. So we get a gateway, a core, a pylon, and on 20 supply, a zealot. Now, this is actually the same response I often recommend against 12 pool, but here you're not chrono boosting the zealot and you're not going to get a second zealot. I also like to have my core be the most protected structure because if he takes one gateway down, honestly, that's not the biggest of deals, right? Imagine he really wants to kill one gateway. Like no one really cares about that because you still have another gate and you're going to get two adapts out pretty fast no matter what. You can like, it's, it's, it doesn't matter. But if he takes out the cyber core, all of a sudden you can't add any follow up tech. So he, you see, he still tries to go for the cyber core, but I'm gonna be completely fine here, honestly. If he attacks the, another thing that's a nice little trick is you want to have the hole be close to the building that is the most vulnerable. So in this case, this gateway is the most vulnerable. And then there's a trick you can do where if he starts attacking this gateway, if you just attack the zerglings on the side and move back. You can even have a probe patrolling here or a probe on hold position over here. All of these things are possible. So some little tricks. Now, you see, there's no second gas. Um, I get a Nexus after my first Adept, then I can get my second Adept after. You can also get second Adept and then Nexus, but I prefer it like this. Um, I'm not sure if I have a good reason for it or not. But yeah, you see, I'm, I'm just moving out with the Zealot trying to do it. Put your Adept behind and attack the links that are attacking a building. All right, that's basically just gonna be what you wanna do. Then your follow-up now is gonna be slightly different here. So. Because it's a 14 pool, you couldn't get your second gas quickly. So playing Twilight into Robo is not really an option. So instead, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be focusing on just the Twilight. And we're going to be playing 3-gate Glaive. So I want four Adepts still. So I want to build two more. But first, I want to get Twilight Council, basically ASAP, and uh, one of these. And you might ask, hey, why aren't you afraid of a follow-up? Because follow-up all ins from the 14 pool are a lot worse. Um, they're their eco is really bad um, they have trouble getting any type of gas income you see just now he's really been getting kind of saturated so it, it's it's just not a very good build order for follow-up all-ins if you're very afraid of follow-up all-ins you can of course still scout with your adepts across the map or you can keep your probe over there whatever you want <coughs> so um i try to get my gateway before uh, the warp gate research hit um, so if we go back so I get my, before it gets 54, basically, because uh, a gateway takes 46 seconds. So now all three gateways will be ready the moment my warp gate research finishes. That's pretty damn perfect. Um, so in total, I get four adapts. I, sh I like the shade to win to try and see if I can do some damage, you know. Um, usually I'd say after you shade him once, you just go out. I think here I go back in, but then the links pop and I lose, I think maybe even two of that, maybe just one, I can't quite remember. Um, but you see how hard he's struggling to get anything out. He has three queens, he doesn't really have money for a third base, and he definitely doesn't have any money for a road warrant follow-up. And here comes my next push out already. Now, ideally I have one more adept with this, but even like this, like he doesn't even have clay, like he doesn't even have speed yet. Like he's trying to get a lot of uh, workers out, but it's honestly looking quite rough for him. And um, similar to last, actually this is this is way better for Toss than just against the 16 pool. Against the 16 pool, usually the game is kind of even. Here he's just in a really bad spot. Like he doesn't have roaches, he doesn't have anything really in order to deal with my adept. So he basically just dies. And I think this is the best follow-up uh, for against a 14 pool. And the other one is best against a uh, 16 pool. Now you can still get a robo... Uh, later on you can keep building adepts at home you can get a faster third base like there's many things you can do from here but honestly i'm 41 workers against uh, 29 and uh, he still needs to be building stuff so this game is just yeah it's just kind of over honestly. Like, we can we can watch it till the end if you want but i'm up 16 workers even bases uh, and i think i also have superior tech so from here on out i, I think i throw down a dark shrine or something and start rallying stuff across the map completely crush him uh, it's not that interesting but yeah these are the, the the two things i wanted to show you guys i i hope it was helpful um 
yeah, that's basically it. If there's any questions, don't forget to ask me in the comments down below. I don't answer them, but other people, <laughs> other people might. Now I'll see if I'll answer for like the first hour or so. I'll answer some questions. Uh, so thanks everyone for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. As that's very cool. Uh, there's also other things you can follow me on. It's also very cool and videos that are really cool. Another great episode of the Harstam 25 minutes. And I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.